the morning of December 7th, 1941, I was on board the Whitney, and I woke up early and decided to get up and go out on the main deck. I never went down to breakfast on Sundays on the Whitney because it's terrible, t terrible uh, breakfast. So I wandered down on the main deck and looked aft, which was the floor down, and I see his face diving on there, and I kind of wondered what was going on, because the fry boy used to do it, but then they had uh, bombs made out of flour and coal dust, you could see where they hit. That morning I couldn't see where they hit, so I kind of wondered what was going on, and it was about that time, a Japanese plane flew right by the stern of the Whitney. If I'd have had a potato, I could have thrown it and hit him with that. And of course, I figured it was, he shouldn't be down there. And, and the only place for me to go was up on my gun station, so I turned around and started going up to number three, three inch, it was up on top of the Whitney. And about that time, a general quarter stall sounded. And when we, all of our gun crew got up there, there was five men on the gun crew, and we, Try to get into the ready box to get into our shells. And the ready box was long, of course, being on Sunday. So we found a pry bar and tried to lock up of it and started firing grenade planes. But there was only one small problem. The planes were right down on among us, and all of our shells were set at 10,000 feet. But naturally, we didn't hit anything. But we fired up all our shells anyway. And after we fired up all the shells, there wasn't much to do because we couldn't get down and get more shells. So we just stood around and looked at the rest of the harbor. We saw the light cruiser Raleigh take a bomb hit and a torpedo on the port side and start to capsize. We saw that Arizona, when it exploded, I thought it was the end of the world when that thing went off. So these Torpedo planes were flying into the ship row, releasing their torpedoes, and they were flying this way, and they were coming around our bow and, and going back again. So we all decided, why don't we go down on the five-inch surface guns? We had one five-inch on the port side and one five-inch on the starboard side. So why don't we go down there and see if we can find, hit something with them? five-inch shells. So, so we went down there and started firing a surface gun, but that gun would only elevate eight degrees, and it took it a long time to move it back and forth going with a huge gun. And by the time the planes were flying by, when well, we'd fire on the plane, of course, we never did hit any, but our shells were going over in, into the Sugar cane and exploding, and they thought people over there thought they were being bombed, and really weren't bombed, being bombed. We were just firing on them with our five-inch gun. So after that, after that, we decided we'd go back up on a, a three-inch gun. Maybe we could pump some shells from one of the other guns. They were they were out of ammunition too, so we just stood around and watched uh, the war being going. Uh, fought around us. Um, the shawl went up in really a lot of flame and a terrible explosion. And then we were looking back at the rolling, which was, they were counter flooding that and trying to keep it from turning over like it, Oklahoma did and capsizing. And we saw this major submarine steaming, steaming up the harbor. And just about that time, over on our right-hand side, the, the, Curtis, the seaplane tender, Curtis to the right, and I don't know which one it was, fired on that major submarine with a five-inch shell and shot off the periscope. So, of course, he had to surface one of the, we had five destroyers alongside of ours. 
and one of our destroyers pulled out, come around and was going to go and uh, hit it with their five-inch gun, but he got too close to it. So he just backed up, and about that time, that those Japanese must have been a little bit worried because they saw that destroyer bearing down on them, and they looked at all around us to see which one was the biggest ship around there, and which, which happened to be us, of course. So, so they turned that torpedo loose on us, but they made a small mistake. They set it too deep. They thought we were the bigger ship than we were. And they went underneath our ship and exploded over on the beach. And that, I think it was a Monahan that pulled out of our nest and went around and he got so close to that submarine, he couldn't depress his gun enough. So he just backed up, kicked it in the butt, went up and rammed that submarine, sunk it. And that was about the last thing that I remember, except in the afternoon, we went over alongside the Raleigh and put down a collision map with our, with our divers, keep the water from flooding the, on the port side, and put over our uh, lines and we got pumping up and saved the Raleigh from capsizing. After that, we kind of looked around, there was nothing else to do. That's one of my experiences. Thank you, inspiring All-American boy, Joseph Bailey, ladies and gentlemen. The opening ceremony for this annual Pearl Harbor Memorial Parade, which will be starting on Kalakaua Avenue in just a few minutes, ladies and gentlemen, with the award ceremony there at the park. It's now with our principal speaker representing the, the band, Sergeant Major 